friends and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a very belated birthday book haul because I of course want to share with you all of the amazing books that I got for my birthday as well as say thank you to all of the lovely and amazing people who gifted me something for my birthday. Every year I always feel super spoilt and this year was no different so obviously I wanted to make this video just to say thank you. But without further ado I'm just going to get straight into the books because this may be a long video so grab yourself a drink and some snacks and let's get started. So the first two books are books I bought myself because I did get a £30 Amazon gift voucher for my birthday from work um, and I of course had to spend it on books like where else or what else would I spend it on? But the first book I treated myself to was Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and this one has been highly recommended by many um, YouTubers I watch that are non-booktubers um, so a lot of the sort of self-improvement, spiritual all of those kind of YouTubers that I watch um, swear by this book and I'm really really excited to get around to reading it because it sounds like it's going to be um, it's about like the creative process um, and I think it's going to be a mixture of sort of spirituality practices and how that can help your creativity because um, it says creative living beyond fear and I currently feel like I need some assistance in my creative process I guess because um, it's not been going very well, so I'm hoping to gain some insight from this book, especially as it comes um, highly recommended and everyone that does recommend it says that it like massively changed the way they think about creativity and changed their creative process as well. So can't wait to get around to reading this one. The next book I treated myself to is in fact a graphic novel and this one will come to no surprise to many of you, but I did finally treat myself to Heartstopper Volume 4 as I do have volumes 1 to 3 but I never got round to either buying or reading this one because of course after watching the Netflix TV show I had a massive Heartstopper shaped hole in my life that this very nicely filled and it was so great to read um, you know, one of the graphic novels I hadn't actually read yet, so it was like brand new material, and volume four is definitely my favourite out of the volumes so far. I'm so excited that we're getting two more seasons on Netflix as well, um, so very happy that I finally treated myself to this, um, and I of course have finished it and loved it, and I'm just very happy that it now lives on my bookshelf with the rest of the volumes. The next two books were gifted to me by Sylvie from the TBR Diaries, who sent me a lovely birthday care package with lots of lovely goodies in it, as well as two books. Um, but the first book was Sappho, which has been translated by Mary Barnard, and this is a collation of um, Sappho's poetry and like fragments of poems and I have already finished this one I finished it in one sitting I got into bed and I read it all in one go and it is beautiful and amazing and I would recommend it to those who are wanting to read some like Greek translations or Greek literature as this is obviously a great place to start because it's poetry so it's very digestible I also really enjoyed the commentary at the beginning and the end of the poems um, about Sappho and her life and the poems themselves and different people's translations of the poems and what they could mean um, so really enjoyed all of that and I also believe that sapphic the word sapphic comes from Sappho because Sappho was a gay female Greek poet. Like what's not to love about that? <laughs> so I can see why this one is recommended a lot, especially by Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts, which is where I got this recommendation from. Love this, so happy to have it in my poetry collection. So thank you, Sylvie. And the other book that Sylvie gifted to me was The Lesser Bohemians by Ema McBride. The only other Ema McBride book I have read is um, A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing and I adored that book. It's written in a stream of consciousness and just everything about it was perfectly executed. I loved every single second of that book. It was very difficult to get into, but I loved it. And as soon as I finished it, I knew I wanted to read more Ema McBride. And this one really intrigued me when I read the synopsis as it follows an 18 year old Irish girl who moves to London in the 1990s to become um, or start drama school and she starts um, or she gets into a relationship with a much older actor and this book is basically the highs and lows of their relationship and it does say on the back that The Less Bohemians is a celebration of the dark and the light in love and it just sounds like something I know I'm going to devour and love and I'm very excited as well to see how this one is written because obviously 
with a girl is a half-formed thing. Um, the writing was very specific for that story. Um, so I'm intrigued to see what Eamon McBride's normal prose writing is like. Um, I do think I'm going to love this one. The next book was also sent to me in a birthday care package and it was sent to me by Shah from Thoroughly Enjoyed Books. Um, and I did also do a separate video on me using a lot of the items in Shah's birthday care package, which I will obviously link in the description box and in the cards. But the book that came in that box was The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Riez. And this is another one that's been highly recommended by a lot of the non-bookish YouTubers I watch. Um, it's a book that's about sort of personal growth and self-help. It's a practical sort of guide to freedom and happiness and how to live your best life and how to love um, and you know your spiritual being and all of those things which I really love um, and it's really short so it's high on my want to read list um, I do think I will re be reading this one sooner rather than later um, and I'm just very excited again to have this um, so I can finally get around to reading it. The next two books were very kindly sent to me by Anna from Read To Me At Midnight and they are such Anna books that I'm just so excited. But the first one is Ray Bearer by Jordan Fueco and again this one is much loved on booktube and it is a fantasy novel um, that has a lot of African mythology in it I believe. Um, I had never actually heard the synopsis of this or what it was really about until I saw Sylvie recommend it on her channel and she just everything she said about it just immediately made me want to read it. Um, so yes I'm very excited to be getting around to this one as well and I do believe it's part of a duology which I love because I've really gone off trilogies and the second book is out now so hopefully I can get one too and just speed through this series. Um, I'm just so excited because I haven't read a fantasy novel in so long um, and this one really intrigues me. Now this next book that Anna sent me for my birthday Weirdly, I think I literally added to my wish list the day before she messaged me to say she'd sent me uh, my birthday books. So when I opened the package, I was like, what is that massive book? <laughs> well, I was like, what on earth could that be? And then I opened it and I was like, oh, I literally just added that to my wish list. So again, another one I'm very excited for, um, but it is Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. And yes, this is the movie or BBC, um, TV adaptation tie-in because I really dislike the normal cover because this is actually a historical fiction novel and I think that the normal cover makes it look like a contemporary novel and that just throws me. Um, but when I saw the trailer for Life After Life and also have heard the synopsis of this book from uh, people like Victoria from what Victoria read because I think she adored this book as well. Um, it sounds like a book that I know I'm going to love, but the cover was just throwing me off completely. <laughs> so as soon as I saw um, the TV adaptation tie-in cover on Amazon, I was like, there we go, I can buy it now and I can read it. <laughs> and I don't really know much about the synopsis of this, but I'm gonna read the back because that's what intrigued me. Um, but it says, what if you had the chance to live your life again and again until you finally got it right? During a snowstorm in England in 1910, a baby is born and dies before she can take her first breath. During a snowstorm in England in 1910, the same baby is born and lives to tell the tale. What if there were second chances and third chances, in fact, an infinite number of chances to live your life? Would you eventually be able to save the world from its own inevitable destiny? And would you even want to? Everything about that just sounds so intriguing to me. Um, and it does make sense as to why it's so long now because obviously it's set it starts in 1910 and if it follows one person living their life again and again and again um i i can imagine it being a lengthy book <laughs> um but the fact that people like victoria um love this has also got me very excited about getting around to reading it even if it is massive so this next book i've actually started i'm actually halfway through it and it was sent to me by the lovely rosie from sparkles books um, and that is healing is a new high by vex king i have read vex king's first book um good vibes good life and loved that um i read it i think like this time last year maybe um, so as soon as I saw that he brought out a new book that was about healing, um, I of course added it to my wish list. And I am reading this at like the perfect time. 
I feel like Vex King's books come into my life at the perfect time and they just give me everything that I need to like take a step forward basically. Um, so his first novel or first book again is sort of like non-fiction and about personal growth um, and it covers things like meditation and all these practices you can do to basically um, raise your vibration and live a better life. Um, but this one focuses more on trauma and how people who have gone through trauma, like everyone has, um, no matter how big or small that is, it can just keep coming back to sort of affect your life again and again, um, unless you choose to sort of heal that. Um, and of course, as his other book did, um, there's practical guides um, to do to try and heal yourself um, from the effects of your trauma and I it's it's fantastic I've already seen a difference from a few of the exercises I've done um, there are things I want to do weekly because um, it just makes a massive difference and that's why I love his books because they come with actual like practical advice that you can implement into your life that makes a difference so what's not to love about that <laughs> so yeah like I said I'm halfway through this one already loving it so thank you so much Rosie for gifting me this one for my birthday it's come into my life in the perfect time. I cannot wait to finish it. And it's gonna be one that I think is probably gonna change my life. The next book I have to show you is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. And this was very kindly sent to me by Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots. Um, and this one, again, like most of them, are uh, ones that have been on my radar for a really, really long time. The synopsis of this just sounds excellent. And I've been trying to make an effort to read more translated and Japanese um, fiction so this one obviously ticks those boxes but the synopsis of this book is that the professor um, I think has a memory of only eight minutes so him and his housekeeper meet for the first time basically every single day as he does not remember her so it's sort of like a first introduction for him every single day when she comes to clean his house and I believe that this story just sort of shows a relationship that's much more than memory and how you can have a connection with someone despite knowing them for a really long period of time. It just sounds like it's gonna be a really beautiful um, novel about relationships and life. And I love things like that. The next book was sent to me by Mary from Mary Among Stories. And that is A Bitter by Akwaki Amezi. And this is the sequel to Pet. Um, which I read last year and absolutely adored it. So I, of course, have been meaning and wanting to read the sequel. I do believe Bitter isn't an immediate sequel to Pet. It is just set in the same world that Pet is set in. Um, and I adored that world. So I'm very excited to meet some new characters um, and see sort of how this story goes because Pet did something really spectacular. Um, so I'm intrigued to see what Aquaki Mezzi does with these new characters, but in, in the same world. Um, and it's one, again, I'm hoping to read sooner rather than later. So thank you again, Mary, as well, for sending me this one. Now this next book was sent to me by the lovely Karis from Karis's Corner and that is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zorna. Uh, this is a memoir and it follows obviously the author who is Korean American. Uh, she's a singer, uh, musician, she's in a band called Japanese Breakfast I think. She's a director and now of course an author but this is another one that I've been seeing absolutely everywhere and everyone says it's amazing, absolutely heartbreaking um, and I have recently got into um, K-dramas and it's just opened up this whole other area of my life um, and when like I googled sort of Korean literature or Korean books and this was like the first on so many lists um, and yeah I'm just very excited to get around to this one because um, there must be a reason why everyone is loving it. I also don't tend to normally reach for memoirs. Memoirs aren't normally the kind of non-fiction books I read. So I am hoping this one, especially if it is really good, it might, you know, um, get me to venture into the memoir uh, book genre a little bit more. These next two books were sent to me by the lovely Charlotte from Coining Reads. And again, these are such Charlotte books that I'm just so excited. Um, there's something about when someone sends you books that um, are very like based on their own um, like likes and genres. I just, it, it's more like personalized and it just gets me so excited. Um, but the first one is The Penelopad by, Pen I can't pronounce this, okay. 
we're gonna move on. Uh, but it's of course by Margaret Atwood. I have actually got two other books that are in this sort of mythology series um, by the canons. Uh, one of them is the Jetnet Winterson um, retelling of Atlas. Um, and another one I've got is by Kelly Armstrong and it's a non-fiction book about um, mythology sort of through the ages. So from like prehistory to the modern day, I haven't read that one yet. Um, but this was the third one in the series that did intrigue me as I have read a Margaret Atwood before um, and enjoyed uh, her writing. So this one is also really highly recommended um, and I like the shorter Greek uh, myth retellings. And this one follows um, Penelope, the wife of Odysseus, um, and it sort of follows Penelope while she's waiting for Odysseus and sort of retells her story basically um, because her story is like a lot of the wives of um, the men in these Greek myths are kind of like sidelined and their stories are not told um, so I love it when in these retellings um, their stories are at the forefront um, and the retellings are based on uh, the women instead. Um, so I'm very excited about getting around to this one and again it's one I'm hoping to get to soon because it's a nice short one. And the next book is one that so many of you will be very happy that I now own and have in my possession and I'm just waiting for the perfect time to read it. Um, but when again I opened the, the packaging and I saw that this was in here I actually did like a high-pitched scream. <laughs> uh, but it is The Woman They Could Not Silence by Kate Moore. So this is Kate Moore's new book. If you didn't know, um, her other book is The Radium Girls, which I adored but also hated. Like, it's a brilliant book, but it made me so angry. <laughs> um, and it's definitely one I want to reread. It's a non-fiction book, uh, as is this. Um, again, I just know that Kate Moore is going to make me feel those same feelings. I'm going to love the story that she's telling and be so happy that she is telling it, but at the same time, I just know it's gonna infuriate me, and I kind of love that. Um, and this one basically follows um, a group of women who were incarcerated into a mental institution by their husbands um, before 1848, when a law was passed that meant that they, could, that they couldn't do that anymore. Um, so obviously, me hearing about the lives of these women and what their husbands did to them, by putting them into mental institutions when they were just voicing their opinions is definitely gonna make me angry. <laughs> um, but this one is also huge. I think it, it looks like it's gonna be bigger than um, The Radium Girls. I, again, really want to listen to this one on audiobook like I did The Radium Girls the first time I read that because Kate Moore narrates it and she just does a fantastic job. Like I said, I'm waiting for a time to read this because I just know a time is going to come where I'm like, I need that amazingly written non-fiction book about women that's going to make me really angry. <laughs> and this will be waiting patiently for me. So thank you so, so much, Charlotte, for sending me this one. You cannot, like, I'm, you can tell I'm just so excited to have this one um, on my shelves now. And last but not least is this gorgeous edition of Leerwife by J.R. Thorpe that was sent to me by the lovely Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe. And um, the version of this I had on my wish list was the paperback. So I was of course beyond grateful when the hardback edition arrived. So thank you so, so much, Olivia. And this one of course is another retelling. Um, I love retellings apparently. We love this for me, <laughs> um, of King Lear. And again, it's a retelling from the perspective of King Lear's wife who gets put, I believe, in a men mental institution. Oh no, she gets exiled to a nunnery. <laughs> um, and it's basically the story of King Lear's wife. Um, and I did originally, for some reason, think that this one was told in verse, but it's not. Um, it's prose, uh, but it's to do with, it's a Shakespeare retelling um, following a woman that is forgotten in the play. And we all love that. So I'm very excited again to get around to reading this one. Um, and I do believe 
from the recommendations I have seen, people have been enjoying this one too. So those are all of the amazing books that were very kindly gifted to me for my birthday and they're very heavy, I feel like I'm going to drop them. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to get around to reading some of these and I'm so glad that I've also already finished some and have started some others. Um, because that means my reading pace is picking up. Um, thank you again to everyone who gifted me something for my birthday and everyone of course will be linked in the description box below if you want to check any of these lovely people out. Um, thank you guys so so much for watching this and you'll see me soon in another video. Bye! <laughs>